We left off over here. <coughs> on the very towards the bottom of um I am based on the base. Seventy two B on the very bottom. Itmar. Okay. The Mishnah says a case that if a man marries a woman on the condition she has no Nadorim. And she has Nadorim. What's that law? She's not married. It's a false, it's not, was under false, false pretenses she was married. <laughs> but the Mishnah says, let's see, he marries originally on the condition she has no Nadorim. Then, then Konsa. Then he, the same woman, he goes to Chupa and he doesn't say the precondition. And they cohabit. After that, does she need to get, doesn't she need to get? He already stated his position. I don't want a wife that has an adoram. But he said that at the time of the Kedushin. When he went to Chuppah, no, I didn't forget. Didn't have, he didn't say it. I didn't say he forgot. You said he forgot. Right? He didn't say it. He didn't say the condition at the time of the Chuppah. And he went. So do we say his mindset at the time of the Chuppah was identical to the Kedushin? And therefore, now when he finds out she has an adoram, he has so what sh she's not married. He doesn't have to give her a get. She goes goes uh, goes her own way. Because just like as the the condition was on, on the four false pretenses, the chub is on the false pretenses. Or do we say no? That since he cohabited with her, right? So what happens? If you Kedushin, he didn't cohabit. So therefore, I, I want to buy something that's gold and you sold me something that's silver. I'm not interested in silver, I'm interested in gold or vice versa. I mean, it this kind of wife, not that kind of wife. But once he cohabits, what happens? Then, if it turns out the marriage is not a marriage, so the act of cohabitation, who did he cohabit with? With a single woman. Then that's classified as bias nus. He's, I'm not in interested that what I did was, should be classified as promiscuity. Therefore, I'm willing to forego my precondition, and I'll marry her regardless, even if she's flawed. And if I decide to divorce, I'll divorce her afterwards. That's one, one, one position. Another position is no. Since I already stated my position, I'm not interested. So even though he didn't ha say it at the time of the chub, it doesn't mean to say he retracted. didn't retract. He had no reason to say it. Because he already stated what kind of wife he wants. So if it turns out she has an adorim, even if it cohabits with her, and he realizes he sends her off without a get. That's the machlok's of Rabbi Shmur. Okay? No preconceived ideas, Right? Okay. He married her on the condition, the concert stam. And when he went to Chupi, he didn't say a word. Like the case. Harem Magdesh Li on the condition you have no Nadorim. They go to Chupa, doesn't say a word. Rava Matsriche Meruget. Rav says she needs a get. Shmulama ain't a Tsriche Meruget. She needs no get. Right? Omar Abayi. Lo tame a time it rab came she conscious stam achuli achlit noi. Don't say that the rationale of rab is because since he repeated that's an indication he retracted. He changed his mind. Yeah? That he's okay with a wife although she has an adorim. That's, that's not the understanding of rab. Following Norman. Elo tame the rab, the fishino de bose bilosa bilos nus. The man says, I still don't want. But what's, what, what, what's, the, what's the alternative? If it's not, that means bias nus. I'm willing to bite the bullet, let it be, and then I'll get rid of her afterwards, if he chooses to. Okay? So what's the machlok is? Is a person willing to be bias or nus or not? Rob sa Shmuel says it's a retraction. Right? Shmuel says the man stated his case, although he didn't say a word at the time of the chuppah, his position is, I don't want to marry or have a wife who has an adorim. Cohabit, not cohabit, it's irrelevant. Therefore, the marriage is not a marriage. I mean, it's interesting. The story of Yaakov. Yaakov, Rochel, Leah. Originally, he was under the impression he was marrying Rochel. Turned out to be Leah. So, according to Rav, it's very good. Why did he keep her as a wife? Because Yaakov didn't want that his beer should be beer's nus. You understand? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, why, why did he keep her? I, 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 even when he cohabited with her, who did he want to cohabit with? With Rochel or with Leah? Rochel turned out to be Leah. Yet afterwards, it was his wife. Why was it his wife? 
The answer is, according to Rabbi, it's very simple. Ain't no the osabilos abilos nus. Of course, what's the alternative? If she's not, that means the act of cohabitation is an act of promiscuity. Under no circumstances would Yaakov allow that to be. The Bolay is his wife. Because when he did that act, whoever it may be, that's my wife. Because if she's not my wife, I got a problem. You follow me? But according to Shmuel, who says, Oh, the most of Bilos, of Bilos Nus, he clearly wanted to marry Rochli, didn't want to marry Leah. So if that's the case, why was Leah his wife? Because he cohabited with her. It was on the false pretenses. He thought it was Rochli who turned up to Leah. So how does Shmuel learn the story of Yaakov and, Yaakov and Leah? So why didn't he? Well, Shem didn't say that. Where did he say it? <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Yaakov, you could say, when Yaakov, when Yaakov named, gave the bracha to Ruvain, right, on his deathbed, what did he say to Ruvain? You, you are the first of my seed. What does that mean? Yaakov, so Rashi says, although he was married at what age? He was married, he was 84 years old. He, Yaakov was 84 years old when he was married. So, could you imagine a man from the time he's born to lady, never to, to expend any semen, even accidentally? That was the period of Yaakov. So Yaakov understood if Hashem allowed his seed to be expended into Leah, that means Leah is meant to be the wife. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, God wouldn't have allowed it. So to him, that was a confirmation. Whoever I expend my seed, that is my wife. Here we're talking about ordinary people. That's the Machlux of Rabbi Shmuel. Ordinary people. Would a person, would he, does he want his Bia to be a Bia's Nus, not be a Bia's Nus? That's our discussion here. No, not a machlo. No, 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 no. He could have annulled it. Right. And he didn't annul it. Right. So who's, who's at fault? So additionally, she was fault, but because he didn't become serious, uh, the says about the Mizar, but he's at fault because uh, he could have annulled it and gone up to Okay. So that was yesterday. So how, how would we look at it to today's world? This is, she, she has the Ndorim from before they were married. I don't want to marry a woman who has Ndorim. She has Ndorim. She right. came in with baggage on, with her. Right. So what does that do with the husband? This is the new husband. He has nothing to do with these Nadorim. So she would be a fault to send her away with no Kibbutz Kibbutz. No, you don't even need a Ksuba here. Forget no. about the Ksuba. I'm just going to what we said yesterday. He would send her away, period. That's it. That's the violated thing. If, if, it's, if he's at fault, that it was the bad. Who's at fault? She at fault or he at fault? So in this case, that wasn't done, no, but this has, everybody agrees here. She, she's at fault. Well, but here it's even better. Yeah. It's not even a marriage. It's not a marriage. Yeah. According to Shmuel, still, I didn't want to marry this kind of woman. Finished. It's not she made it in the dorm after they were married. She came in with baggage. I said, I don't want that kind of baggage. No, let's say a person has an illicit relation with a woman. She's his wife. She's not his wife. Or a person goes and has a relation with a prostitute, a Jewish prostitute. She, what, she's his wife? Of course not. <laughs> the intent was not hers or his to have her be married. But here the man wants to get married. So if it turns out not to be married, what is it? It's Bias Nus, he's not interested. That's Rob. Shmuel says, no. He has his, his, his standards. I don't want that kind of wife. I, it'll turn out to be, it's not what I'd intended to it. But if, it, that, if that's the cost factor, let it be the cost factor. That's Shmuel. No, no, no. No, those are conditions that you're entering the marriage that each side will, 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 will actually support and give the certain amenities which are needed for a marriage. You know, you're going through with the marriage, you're going to provide clothing and what it's that. That's it's a whole different thing. That's purely financial. 
No, no. Right. Not even supported. No, no. How to enter into marriage. This is pre-marriage. To know I'm at a, at a wedding is pre-marriage. Okay. So this is the Machlok's Rav and Shmuel. All the most will be less of not be less of these. If two, two Amorim argue a certain point, or argue once, why do you have to argue with it, it, it twice? If it's the same <coughs> argument, unless th there's a difference in one argument and the other argument. What do we say? Itmar. Kitano, no, a, a Kitano gets married. If a mother or the brothers marry off a minor, the marriage is rabbinical. So the, the law is, the Chachom said, that if she says, you have to be married, rabbinically, as, as a minor, she says to the husband, I'm not interested in being here any longer. She walks out, she doesn't need a get, she needs nothing. Let's say the mother or the brother is married as a minor, and now she is 12 and a half years old. So that means he cohabited with her after she was an adult. The marriage started off as a minor. Now she crossed the threshold in, into adulthood. Nara. Let's say Nara. She's a Nara now. And he co cohabited with her after they passed that threshold. Although the original, the wedding, was as a Ketana. Is she an adult? Is she married on a Torah level now or a rabbinic level? She's married on a Torah level. Why? If, let's say the husband knows that a rabbinic marriage is not a marriage on a Torah level. So therefore, when he cohabits with what's his intention? That I want to marry her? So the act, the act of cohabitation is an act of marriage, right? So now, if you're of the opinion, ain't all the most of bilos of bilos nus, right? So until now, it's rabbinic. Now, because he wants, it's until now, the rabbi said that's okay. But now that you cross the threshold, you have to upgrade the marriage. Let's say he doesn't upgrade the marriage. So what is he doing? He's doing the wrong thing. So we say, a person, if you hold, ain't all the most of bilos of nus, there's no question he intended to marry, to do the act of cohabitation, to upgrade the marriage to a Torah level. So let's say now she would want to walk out on him. Or she, somebody else would marry her. It's nothing. Rav says it's nothing. Why? Because since, based on the same principle, since Eno de Mosa Bilos Bilos Nuz, since in the context of rabbinic marriage, now it could be a, t a Torah marriage, it's unacceptable. So therefore, what was his intent when he cohabited with her when she crossed the threshold? Hello? No, to buy to buy the right thing. Okay, make sure to go through this one, not a, uh, a tire flat repair shop. Okay, just. <laughs> now, Mark says very Abaye, he would he would present a question to to his students just to test and see how sharp they are. So they would say, "But you taught it to us." I said, "Okay, that's 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 what you're supposed to say." <laughs> Okay, <coughs> so Mar is saying, 
they've already argued this issue. not Where did they argue it? Listen to the case. A minor did not walk out on her husband before her 12th birthday. Yeah? Now she crosses, crosses the threshold. He cohabits with her. After she's 12, big deal. She became an adult. Mean she's a Nara. A Nara's an adult, okay? Omdav Nisas, and then she went and accepted Kedushin from a third party. After the husband cohabited with, as an adult, she went and accepted Kedushin from a third party. So normally, if she'd walk out before she's 12, the marriage is like it never existed. So, of course, she's married to the second person. But over here, because he cohabited with her afterwards, although now she's saying, I'm not interested, but actually because he cohabited. So listen, Ravoma ain't tricha, Ravoma ain't tricha get Misheni. She does not receive a get from the second party. The second party's marriage is nothing. Because, she's, because since he cohabited her after she became an adult, she's married to the first husband. So she needs nothing from the second get person. Okay? Since the first marriage is only rabbinical, because what was it founded upon? The mother and brothers marrying off. And the husband never intended to marry her on a Torah level because a person doesn't think about Bilas Nus. That's not a mindset of a person. So when he cohabited as an adult, he didn't cohabit that it should be marriage. That wasn't his mindset. So if that's the case, the marriage remains rabbinical. Right? Even though he crossed the threshold into adulthood. So when the second person gave her the, the money in marriage, she's married to the second man. So therefore, Shmuel says she needs a get. Sricha get. Right? Sricha get nisheni. So if that's the case, it's the exact same argument. Is other most of Bilos of Bilos Nus? Not other most of Bilos of Bilos Nus. So why do they have to argue the same principle in two different cases? It's the same, exact same principle. It's the same basis for the argument. But the Gemara is going to make a differentiation. Okay? No, everything's intense. So the intent is a person doesn't want his, his act of cohabitation to be classified as nus. Rav says that's the mindset. Shmuel says it's not the mindset. So good. So apply that wherever you want. But both cases that Rav says it's one way, or Shmuel says it's based on that principle. So why do they have to argue both cases? Say, argue in one case and you apply it to every other case. Now, let, let's talk now. If you'd ask the average person, who's not so learned, and say, by the way, he marries a, a minor, and the mother or the brother's married. It's his wife. Fault, she's not permitted to commit adultery. She's not right. Now, he knows if she walks out, she has a right to walk out. But if she doesn't work, walk out, she's his wife. Now she becomes an adult. He has relations with her. Do we say that he has in mind, because since he knows it's only rabbinical till now, therefore when he crosses that threshold, he says, now I want to marry her to a level. You have to be a little bit of a Talmud Chochem for that. What, the ordinary person knows this? Doesn't know this. So if that's the case, he continues. He continues. Even though it's only rabbinical, if he would know, maybe I'd say, ain't no the most abilos, but over here he's not aware of it. Where man says, I only want to marry a woman that doesn't have Nidori. That's the woman I want to marry. And then afterwards he goes to Chupa and he cohabits. So, well, he knows what he said. I don't want to marry one that's not. But he says, well, what's the cost factor if the, if the Chupa is not a Chupa? That means that my act is an act of promiscuity. I don't want to be there. The other case, it's contingent about knowing that a rabbinic marriage is not a marriage. You understand? So I would say maybe Rav would agree to Shmuel that the marriage remains a rabbinic marriage. Because there it, it, it's dependent on knowing the fact. You understand? I'll give you an example. A person gets married with, uh, witness, by a reformed rabbi, a reformed reverend, or a uh, or pastor. Right? Pastor, you know, comes from the word pastorized. Okay? Okay, a reformed pastor, okay? And the, the, the witnesses, the witnesses... The, wit the witness is, is, is the super and the janitor. Those are the witnesses. He thinks he's married because it took place in Las Vegas or in Temple Emanuel. I'm not sure where. Okay? And now he believes he's married. He believes it's his wife. But what is it? It's nothing. Is it his? Why? Because he grew up with no Jewish background. He thinks this is his wife. So, uh, he, says, he, doesn't, he doesn't even know what, what the words mean. So the same thing, if a man marries a woman rabbinically, for all intents it's his wife. He knows it's rabbinic she can walk, but if she doesn't work out, she's his wife. 
So now she crosses the threshold into, into, into adulthood. He has relations with her. He has in mind, well, if I don't have this, it's going to be as nosy. It's my wife. It can continues from before. But factually, so therefore, he doesn't have the mind to upgrade the marriage. But Rob says, you know something? A person is aware of that. They're wrong. Is a person aware of this? And because he's aware of it, he wants to upgrade it. If we're going to Rav, the marriage goes from rabbinic level to a Torah level. Shmuel says, no, not necessarily. I'll tell you, if it by Nidorim, I would say there, I know the, Rav, Shmuel would agree with Rav by Nidorim. If, let's say, I only had the case of what? Of Nidorim. Rav Shmuel says, I would agree. But here, the reason why I hold, you need to get from the second husband, because the man's not aware of it. It's a whole different argument, right? So therefore, I need both cases. To, to shed light because they are different. One is based on fact. Fact is, I don't want a woman with the Dorin. What's the cost factor? Be as nus, that's an argument. But maybe Shmuel agrees. So what does he argue by Kitana? The answer is very simple. Because there, that's dependent on knowledge, knowing that a rabbinic marriage is, is not a real marriage. That's why Shmuel says, the, when the third party gives, marries, or why the third party's marriage is a marriage. Because he's not aware that he was supposed to upgrade. No, she be ninety. She be ninety-eight. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, same thing. No, right. Same thing. Now are you still with me? Let, let's read inside. Then we'll then we'll see if you're with me or not. So Mr. Strich, they have to argue both cases. Nothing superfluous here. Why? Here, one second. If I'd only have the case of, of let's say, where he married the minor, then she became an adult. Right? I would say there, because there's no Tanai, that's the reason why. That's the reason why. He didn't say, I'm opposed to it. So we say the person upgraded the marriage. Avol b'hadika to know. Hear them. It's I don't want this kind of woman at any cost. So what I'll say. Now he marries her without saying a word under the chuppah. What would what, I say? The man stated his case. He said I don't want this wife. I the cost is be as nus. Let me be as nus. Emam odelei l'shmoil. They might say maybe there he would agree to shmoil. That even though the cost factor is bias nus, but the man says, I don't want to have this kind of wife. I'll give you an example. Maybe. Let's say a man, he hates a woman like poison. So a woman, and she wanted to marry him. And he's going to make her life, his life difficult. He's going to live Gehenna. And he says, I don't want to marry that woman in any circumstance. And some she dupes him, and she, he, he thinks she's someone else, and he collapses with her under the chuppah, after the chuppah. You can say in that case, because I know those bilas, bilas, nus, he wanted the marriage. The man said a million times over, there's no way. Even Rob would agree over there. It's not a marriage. The cost factor is what? It's not worth it. So that's the question over here. By Nidorim, to what degree is he opposed? Is he agreeable that it should be bilas, nus, or not? If I'd only have the case of going upgrading the marriage from Kitana to an adult, I'd say Shmuel agrees. That what? Because here he didn't state his position. Where he states his position, what does Shmuel hold? It's obvious. He didn't. So therefore, of course, he wants to upgrade it. Therefore, I need both arguments. They all have to argue the case of, 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 of Tanai and the case going from a rabbinic marriage to a Torah marriage. Tanan. We learned in the Mishnah. Konso Stam. This is a new Mishnah. He marries a Stam. Yeah, right? Konsa Stam. Right? The Mishnah. Tetzi Shlobuch Subah. It says in the Mishnah. El Mishnah. It says a man who marries a woman goes to Chobah Stam without saying a word. She leaves without a Ksuba. What's the inference without a Ksuba? No. 
that's true, but that's not, that's not, that's not what the, what's the inference? It says he marries her. He originally met, gave, it says, Harim Kadesh Lee, you don't have Nadari. Then he goes to Chlopa, doesn't say a word. It says she goes out without a Ksuba. She goes out without a Ksuba? No, no, the case, the mission is not told about the mind. The dope. He marries a woman, Harim Kadesh Lee, that you don't have Nadari. Then he goes to Chlopa, doesn't say a word. So it says, this woman, it says, Konsustam, Konsustam, we're, we're learning the cases. He stated his case, not Konsustam. It says, Teitze Shlobe Ksuba. She goes out without a Ksuba. What's the inference? Without a Ksuba to get, she needs. Right? If she doesn't even get, you tell me she doesn't need a Ksuba, she's not his wife. Right? Let's see, just, let's talk just Kedusha. A man marries one on condition, you have Nadari. You're going to tell me, you know, you don't have to pay a Ksuba. You don't have to pay a Ksuba. She's not my wife. Right? It, it, there's a more fundamental issue over here. Look, Ksuba means, even though she's your wife and she needs a get, still because she duped you, you don't have to pay a Ksuba. Because he, you never wanted to marry this kind of woman. Yeah. Right? So that's the inference of the Mishnah. Tate says, Shlobe Ksuba, Ksuba, Hud Loboy. Hid Loboy. Ksuba, she doesn't get. Hagita Bayo. But a get she does need. Right? So, who, so this proves Rav. That, that it's, it's a marriage. My love. So what, what's the case of the Mishnah? Kitcha al Tanai. He immediately ma- married her on the condition he has no Nadorim. But Konsestam. And yet it says in the Mishnah, what does, how does she leave without Aksuba? But the inference without Aksuba to get she does need. She to the Shmuel. So there's a refutation of Shmuel. I know how it gets it. Why? Because when he gets excited, he rubs the page. I know he got it. Okay. My, so it's Tuf de Shmuel, so Shmuel's refuted. Norman, you with me? So Shmuel answers, look, the case when it says in the Mishnah, Konsa Stam, Tetsi Slob Ksuba, Lo Kitsch, Lo Kitsch Stam, Vakonsa Stam. It's a separate case. He went to, when it says Konsa Stam means just as he went to Chubu without a Tanai, he married her without a Tanai. But if originally he married her, the condition was on the condition. And although he didn't say a word at the chuppah, he already stated his case. The truth is, she goes without a get. Right? Because it was under false pretenses. And Shmuel doesn't hold of what? He says, if that's the case... You know, this mission is a man marries a woman on the condition she doesn't have Nadorim. And then she's found out to have Nadorim, right? She ain't Nadorim, bin Nipsal Nadorim. It says she's not married. The mission is a bigger chidush according to, uh, according to Shmuel. If he marries her without a Tanai, and he goes to Chup without Tanai, she doesn't need a get. Okay? Same like this. Shmuel learns the case, what it says, why does she lose the Ksuba? Because he married her without, the Kedushan was not conditional. But since it turned out she has all this baggage, he doesn't have to give, but again he has to, because he didn't say it was conditional. Right? Lo kitshistam, konsistam, abu kitshal, tenayv, konsistam, hochanam, it lo boi get. Or says, if the Antonia, makarish, is isha, manash, in the door, in the door, in the is, how does the mission state its case? The Gemara states that it's two cases. First, it says one case. It's like this. A man marries a woman on a condition she doesn't have the dorm, and she's found to have the dorm. He never went to Chuppah. Ain't The mission should say, should, should say a bigger Kiddush. He married her on the condition she doesn't have the dorm, and then he went to Chuppah without saying a word. That's what it should say, Ain't the Ain't Tzorach get. doesn't say it. That's not the way the mission uh, 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 maps it out. Hamakarish the Isha al Nashin al Nadorim. Ainu Mukudeshis. The Ainu Mukudeshis is stated too early. You should say it a little bit later. Makarisham Nashin Ladera Vakonsa Stam. Right? Ainu Tsricha Get. 
So if even Kansastam in Tzurich get, so if he just had Kedushin, definitely you shouldn't need a get. Right? The Tana always wants to tell me the greater Chidush. Right? So the way you state the case, how should you state the case? Tell me the greater Chidush. The way Rabbi Yudha Nasi wrote the Mishnah. Man marries woman on condition, she doesn't have the Dharma. He just gave her the ring. And right after that, you find out she has the Dharma. What's that, Locha? She's not married. Okay? Is it a big Chidush? It's not such a big Chidush. Right? It was under false pretenses. You know how Rabbi Yudha Nasi should have stated the case. A mar man marries a woman with that preconditioned. She doesn't have the Dharma. Then he goes to Chuppah without saying a word. Even though he went to Chuppah, ain't a tzricha get. That's the way he should say it. But that's not where Rabbi Udanasi states it. He fa if he would state it that way, he said, you ask me, what, and what would be if he found out and he never went to Chuppah? That, that's not the t there's nothing to talk about. Of course it's nothing. So why does he state it as he states it, so seemingly? That would prove Rav. It's only why she ate Bukud Deshes, because it was never followed with Chuppah. But if it would be followed with Chuppah, then she would need a get. Right? The man says, isn't the Dharma speaking? The average man wants to have a wife that he could sit and eat with and be, have a normal relationship. The man made a netter, the woman made a, I don't eat meat. She made a netter, she doesn't drink wine. All the things of normalcy, she, she, <laughs> yeah, so the man doesn't want such a wife. It's, it, it's an abnormal relationship over here. You know, a woman says, you know, I only eat tofu three times a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So that's the Gemara's question. Listening, Konsustam, Benim Sulein, the Dharma, and Gadesh, if a coach came home, Hochanami come out. So you know what he says? So Shmuel Man says, Hochanam, that's exactly what the mission is saying. That's what the mission is saying. When the mission says Enibu Kodesh, it doesn't mean say we stop there. It's Enibu Kodesh even if he, he went to Chuppah. And the next case was this Konsustam, it means where the Gedusha was Stam. And therefore, she doesn't get the get, the, the Ksuba, but the get she needs. Kitcher Stam, but Konsustam. Hagita boy, the gulchupa she forfeits, but the, but what get she needs? It was saying like this when it says the Mishnah, Makar she isha am nashin le endorin, eid bukudeshes. It means even if she went to chupa, but what about at the time of the gedushin? He said nothing, and and he went to chupa. Everything was was neutral. Nevertheless, he doesn't have to pay the ksuba. Why? So the question is why. The answer is, factually, she didn't fool him, so why shouldn't, why shouldn't she get the ksuba? He didn't say, he must have said, I don't want a woman who has nadarim. If that's the case, the truth is, the get that she needs is a rabbinical get. It's a rabbinical get. It's a rabbinical get. This is according to Shmuel. Rava Matana Mesuki Misafka Lake. The Tana has a suffix. He's, he's questioning. The Machlaks Rav and Shmuel is not so simple. Right? If a man stated his case and he went through with it, went through with it, and he didn't say it, do we say that he ain't other Musabilos of his Bilos Nus? So if you say that, then she needs a get. Because the man doesn't want his, his cohabitation to be considered in vain. So she's married. But the other answer, but maybe this is one of the people he couldn't care less. So in terms of being sub, he says that's how much of Araya. So you, you have to be proof that I'm one of those people. So I'm not paying the ksuba. In terms of get, but you may be one of the people who do. So you have to be machmir. Bezin is not going to let you get married unless you get a get. So that's suki misafkali. The Tana it, it, it questions this concept. So in regard to remarrying, which is a, a, a Torah violation. So if you're a you may be a married woman. Therefore, you need to get her on a Torah level. So, but you want to collect? The man says, no, but maybe I'm one of those other kinds of people where I couldn't care less. 
right? So you want the money, you got to prove it. Till then, you, you don't get a ksuba. You may not be my wife. I only have to pay a ksuba to my wife. You're not my wife. If you prove to me you're my wife, then you'll get a ksuba. Right? Gabi mamona lakula. Regarding monetary, we, t we take the we're more lenient meaning. You have the burden of proof is the one who wants to collect the money. Gabi sur lakumra. You want to remarry, you need to get. Omar Rabbo. Now he says something. Rabbo learns a whole different shot in the Mishnah. Phenomenal, phenomenal case. I'll give you a equivalent case in a second. Let's say you have a man wants to marry two women. Two women. And he says to woman A, I'm marrying on the condition you have no Nidori. Right? And then afterwards, and, he, and I'm going to chuba only without Nidori. And it turns out she has Nidori. No question, she needs no get. Now he marries another woman, and he doesn't say a word to the other woman. And she turns out she has plenty in the Doran. Is the second marriage a marriage? Wait. The man already stated what every time he gets married, he has to say his case. The man already is he's opposed to the Doran. Right? He's anti the Doran person. So maybe we'll say that even though he didn't say about his second marriage, his position hasn't changed. Since he didn't in any way reveal that his position changed, maybe what, he, what he's against with the first, he's against with the second. That's the Machloks of Rabbi Shmuel. Here? That's Rabbi. Rabbi, but he says, Omer Rabbi, Machloks, Betos, Shtei Noshi. The Agni, Rabbi Shmuel, speaking about, we deal with two different wives. Avotos, Isha, Achas, Dibri, Yakolin, Shichem, and Oget. If a man marries a woman, he says, Amnas, on the condition you have no Nadarim. Then he goes to Chupa. Right? And he has, he doesn't have, even Rabbi agrees, she doesn't have to have a get. Even though, uh, uh, the most, even though normally, ain't the most abilos, abilos, nus, doesn't make a difference. But to carry that kind of baggage, I'm not interested in that kind of wife. What about if you have wife A and wife B? She said, versus wife A, I don't want a woman that has the Dorin. He doesn't say a word regarding the second marriage, the second woman. Do we say, he's, since he stated his position, therefore, the second wife also needs no get, as the first wife that needs no get? Or do you say no? The, as the Lord will say, the first wife, you know, she wasn't attractive enough to put up with the kind of nonsense. The second wife, he did say it, you know, son, maybe she has something special about her, therefore, even with the baggage, you'll take her. Like somebody says, I, I don't see the bargain. <laughs> That's what Howard used to talk of. I don't see the bargain. I don't see what he saw in her. Okay? Exactly. That's our question. Yeah. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't. Re it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. But let's say the whole world knows that's his position. Right? If that's his position, he never wanted to marry this kind of woman. It's irrelevant. What, she doesn't have, if I marry you on the condition, let's say I said Aiden, I'm only marrying this woman on the condition she has no Nadarim. And she didn't even hear. But I t said it to the witnesses. And he marries her. And it turns out she has no Nadarim. Marriage not a marriage. Well, she wasn't aware. It's irrelevant she's aware of it. It's based on the one who's doing the marriage. They're reversible later, but not, not regarding the marriage. Man marries on the condition you have no Nadarim. It turns out she has. She says, I'll nullify them. It doesn't make the marriage retroactively a marriage. You, so marry a, you'll have to marry a second time. But she can't yeah, yeah, she could nullify them. No, no, she can nullify these these these, these the dorm. She could. She but could yes, yes. But but what was the condition? I don't want to marry a woman who's going to nullify the dorm. I don't want her to have the dorm when we start off. So if that's the case, the condition wasn't met. The marriage is not a marriage. Okay. It's a valid warning. Yeah, why not? They all heard it. And they all said, we will shoot him regardless.
No, I said, I am telling every one of you ten people, if you commit murder, the liability is death penalty. That's what he said. It's clear. He's talking to all ten of them. What relevance does that have to do with this? Okay, well, we learned how we learned the Hushas. It's Hushas simultaneously here. So each person heard it. And they all said, we will do it in either case. I said, every one of you ten people, you commit murder, you're going to be put to death. And they all say in unison, we're here and we're going to do it in either case. So I don't understand what we're going to that's our discussion. No. They don't have to know. It's not up to them. It's irrelevant whether they know or not know. What do they have to know? They don't have to know. So maybe meaningless. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. He doesn't want to marry that kind of woman. Finished. That's it. You can't sell me something that I don't want to buy. Right? I want to buy gold. And you sold me silver. And you thought that I wanted to buy silver. You thought I wanted to buy silver, but I stated I'm, I'm only in the gold business. And you sell me silver. The seller is not, is not interested in deceiving the buyer. So neither one, but yet the buyer says, I'm not having any interest in buying silver. This sale's not a sale. Because it's clear he wanted to buy gold, not silver. But he stated in the... No, he said it in the presence... He said this in the presence of witnesses. That's it. Like, is it her name, Mrs. Silver or Mrs. Gold? Right. Okay. Okay. She wouldn't need. Even Rav would agree. Man makes, marries a woman mistakenly. Betos. Mistaken type marriage. He gives a less than a pruta. He marries with something which is worth an item. She thought it was worth a pruta. It was worth less than a pruta. A minor marries. A minor marries. Yeah, ma a minor marries a woman. A minor's marriage is not a marriage. He's 12. It's a week before his bar mitzvah. He gets engaged, and he gives a ring to the, what's the name? He hasn't reached his bar mitzvah. So, but everybody says, Mazel Tov, you're married. That's what they tell him. Now, he celebrates his bar mitzvah. His wife comes to the bar mitzvah. Okay? He says, I'm going to give you a gift as my wife, a gold watch. He's giving her a gift. So he's giving her a gift as his wife. So he'd say, even though maybe before the marriage was not a marriage, but now he's an adult, maybe giving the gift, the gift is, a, is, is, is an act of marriage, right? Ain't Mukudeshis. Why she not Mukudeshis? Shemach was Kedushin Rishon Rishalach. Because when he gave her the gift, it was, it was based on believing he was married from before. But the marriage before was what? It was nothing. It's not a, there's no, no intent. Therefore, she, she's not married. Vim Boal, what happens after his bar mitzvah? He had relations with her, believing it's his wife. Kanu. Here? Kanu means she's his wife on a Torah level. He's acquired her. Reb Shimon Yudah, Mishim Reb Shmuel Omar, in Bolo, Lo Kanu. No. Even if he had relations, not. It's not his wife. He did not acquire her. So we have an argument. Tanakama says if he has relations, he did. Right? Reb Shimon Yudah says the name of Reb Shmuel. Even if he has relations, he did not acquire her. I v'hocha betos ach ishach. It's one woman here, right? We said now one woman. We say what? Upligi my laf tos n'dorim. It says tos n'dorim. It says one of the mistakes he made. He married a mistake. What's the tos? He thought it was one thing. Turned out about something else. It says lo tos bach shav pruta. He thought the item he gave her. Was worth more, and it turned out to be worth less. Some but post Mishav a pruta, That's a separate case. The Bryce says if he gave her less than the Shav a pruta, Kitcha post betos Mishav a pruta kumafarish. When it says post Mishav a pruta, me you're going to explain what the mistake was. The mistake is not that it was nadorim. The mistake was that he gave her less than a cent, right? 
Kitcher Batos, post you have a proof push come first, Kitcher Batos, what is the meaning that he married her mistakenly? Go to Kitcher Post we have a Pruto. Right? Mamai come if what are they arguing? Marsa Vodum Yudea Shane Kedushin Tov's Box Mesha Pruto. Tanakama holds a person knows that less of fruit is nothing. So therefore when he cohabited with her, what did he do? They, that means he had, knew he had to acquire on the Torah level. The Gomer will the shame Kedushin, the Marsava, but according to Rav Shimi, who they may be Shmuel, ain't no them Yudea, Shein Kedushin Tosim, Shavu, Shavu, Pruto. He's not aware of that. So therefore, when he had relations with her, he thought he's had a relation with his wife from before. At that Kedushin, we shown a ball, so therefore it's nothing. We will stop here.